everyone. Live Life Well TV host Robert Landau here. Welcome to a Live Life Well TV special. We're going to do a special right here, right now on the world's top 10 zoos. So let's start off with this. How prominent was going to the zoo in your childhood and or how prominent was taking trips to the zoo when you were raising your kids or have you taken ever your grandkids or maybe even great grandkids to the zoo? What, if any, was your favorite zoo to visit? Is there a zoo that you visited that kind of stands out in memory? Actually, for me, I think it would be the Denver Zoo, and that wasn't in my childhood. Those were frequent visits uh, in my adulthood. I lived just north of Houston in the woodlands, but uh, before uh, I lived here, 10 years ago, I moved from Denver, where I lived for 12 years, and there is a great zoo in Denver. Uh, I was never a zoo-going type of guy, to tell you the truth, but once I got into going to the Denver Zoo, I was hooked. Uh, and I just loved everything about it, from the way it was laid out, to the special exhibits, to how the exhibits were written up so that you could learn very quickly about what you were seeing. So many things I didn't know about uh, the great animal kingdom on Earth, I learned at the Denver Zoo. So it became a very important teaching tool for me because I, maybe like you, am a ardent animal lover. And I'm a big animal rights person too. So going to the zoo uh, was for me at least a very educational, enriching, often entertaining thing as well. Get this everybody, in 2014, people like maybe you and I numbered 700 million people like us, visited zoos just in 2014 alone. Zoos, I believe, are necessary because they unite and educate the community at large, providing an understanding of the interdependence of animals and their natural habitats and conduct conservation programs of animals in the wild, including breeding programs to reintroduce extinct and endangered species back into their natural environments. And that's one of the many reasons why I feel zoos are still very important to this day. Uh, for species whose survival happens to be in doubt, uh, if they're wild species per se, zoos often set up insurance populations. These are captive groups of animals that could, in a worst case scenario, assist in reintroduction to the wild should the original population go extinct. And we know to this day that there are many uh, animal species that are extinct or dangerously close to extinction. So zoos actually provide a safe habitat and breeding ground to keep certain species alive. Zoos also raise money for conservation efforts, uh, and so that's just some of the reasons why zoos to this day are of value. There are many people who rightfully feel that zoos are not a good thing because they separate animals from their natural habitat. So really, there are two sides of the coin. But let's focus now on the 10 best zoos in the world, according to a website called MediaHopper.com. But it's not only their published results, you will find that if you do some research, the zoos that I'm going to quickly mention for you here are often in the top 10 of many other websites and books and magazines. So here's the first one, Singapore Zoo. 
over 2,800 animals representing no less than 300 species of mammals, birds, and reptiles are spread over the 64-acre wildlife park in the island nation of Singapore in Asia. Unlike many other traditional zoos, the Singapore Zoo features open air exhibits. And of course, that means no cages, carefully and lovingly recreated animal habitats so they feel very comfortable and at home, as well as the zoo featuring special viewing features such as elevated platforms, underwater galleries, glass observatories, and even deep moats that separate some more dangerous animals from viewers. This amazing zoo, the Singapore Zoo, also features regular shows and feedings that help visitors get acquainted with the animals that the Singapore Zoo features. I, uh, with the cruise ships, many of you know that I was a cruise director for many years, would often call at Singapore. And one time I visited this amazing zoo and really have never forgotten it since. It's truly wonderful. Here's the second zoo in the 10 zoos of the world lineup, and it is the zoo in San Diego. Maybe you've had a chance to visit it. The world famous century old San Diego Zoo is home to such exotic creatures such as giant pandas, koalas, leopards, elephants, Chinese alligators, just to name a few. They're all divided between the zoo's 10 bioclimactic zones. Visitors can go from an Arctic tundra to a rainforest all in the same visit. The San Diego Zoo also offers a stunning, and I mean stunning, colorful, beautiful botanical garden of, get this, over 700,000 plants. Now that's a botanical garden. Visitors can also take something called the Sky Fari Aerial Tram to get a better view of the total layout of the zoo and, of course, see all the uh, magnificent animals there from a higher bird's eye view perspective. Next up in our list is Sydney's Taranga Zoo. And I'm talking about the Sydney that's located in Australia. Located 12 miles from Sydney by ferry, the Taranga Zoo is a fully experiential Australian experience, giving the visitors a great introduction to some of the amazing wildlife that can be found in the Australian outback. Just ask Crocodile Dundee. Ah! You need to have a tour guide, though, during your visit, as you'll be able to spot giraffes, koalas, African elephants, Australian sea lions, Tasmanian devils, and over 300 other species. Uh, the zoo's shows offer an insightful look into the activities of seals and birds. Uh, educational talks by many of the keepers there are wonderful, as well as a chance to get up close and nuzzle koalas. I haven't been there, but I've seen photos and videos of that. It is so much fun. And you can also get to feed giraffes. And if you all want to, you can even meet a reptile or two, but that is totally up to you. Oh, what a ride. You can even stay a night or two at the zoo in one of their architecturally designed tents. Would you do that? Alongside, maybe you wouldn't, lions and snow leopards waking up at sunrise, you can also hear the roar of a lot of lions, hopefully nowhere near your architecturally designed tent. Yeah. Next up, we have the Tiergarten Schönbrunn Palace Zoo in Vienna. The oldest zoo in the world 
was built in the turn of the century, uh, and that was the turn of the 17th century on the grounds of the Schönbrunn Palace, a summer palace for royalty during the Habsburg dynasty. Apart from being a breeding ground for exotic creatures, the palace hosted the likes of Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, and of course, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Its menagerie features beautiful flamingos, pandas, giraffes, and a host of other animals. Their most popular exhibition by far is the Baby Panda Exhibition, which visitors, for obvious reasons, can never get enough of. I mean, my goodness, Vienna, Austria is an incredible city to visit, but top on, off a visit uh, to the zoo kind of uh, is the icing on the cake. Next zoo we will feature here is the Columbus, Ohio Zoo. Yeah, you heard me, the Columbus, Ohio Zoo. One of the largest zoos in the world happens to be in Powell, Ohio, which is very close to Columbus, Ohio, with over, get this, 9,000 animals featuring over 793 species attracting over 2.3 million annual visitors, I would say pre-COVID. The Columbus Zoo has proven to be quite an attraction in and of itself. Not only that, but the world-renowned conservation facilities and fundraising programs help outside conservation efforts continue to thrive. And how about this? The Columbus Zoo also features thrilling rides, roller coasters, and if that isn't enough, it also features a fabulous water park, a true family destination that you probably can't get to see in just one day. But you don't have to stay in an architecturally designed tent alongside lions and such. Next up, we have the National Zoological Gardens of South Africa. The National Zoological Gardens of South Africa, also known as the Pretoria Zoo, was founded back in 1916 and has since grown to encompass 216 acres. Half of the zoo lies stretched over flat ground, while the other half of the zoo is hillside, streaming between the two areas is the Apis River, but getting around is as simple as crossing the suspension bridges that are there and following miles of trails and walkways on foot, or you can rent uh, a golf cart. Uh, there is a golf course nearby, or even catching a ride on the cable car uh, to the upper section of the zoo as well. The journey through the zoo winds through exhibits featuring chimpanzees, various water birds, smaller primate, marmosets, tamarins, kangaroos, emus, red pandas, and wildlife only native to South African wildlife preserves and other areas. 9,000 individual animals of over 705 types of species all call this zoo in Pretoria, South Africa, their home. Next up, mm, the Beijing Zoo. This zoo was established in 1906 during the Qing Dynasty and has grown substantially from its relatively humble beginnings that once featured only 12 monkeys, two parrots, and a blind emu. Now, the Beijing Zoo features 950 species of animals housed on no less than 219 acres of land. The most popular exhibits in the Beijing Zoo are devoted to rare Chinese animals, most notably, of course, the giant pandas, giant pandas. Also on display are the South China tiger, Chinese alligators, and the Chinese great salamander, just to name a few. 
Visitors can stroll leisurely around the manicured flower gardens, large groves of trees, grasslands, streams, lotus pools, that's what I want to see, and small hills atop which sit beautifully on uh, alongside uh, 19th century Chinese pavilions and newer Chinese pavilions as well. Next up, we have the London Zoo. The London Zoo has been operating as an animal research facility since 1826. In 1847, those grounds opened to the public. Its success as a family attraction has helped them develop new zoo innovations, such as the world's first reptile house, which was established in 1849, a public aquarium, which was established for the first time in a zoo in 1853, and a petting zoo there, which was established in 1938. Since then, the zoo has retained some of its most notable pieces of Victorian architecture while expanding their animals to include the popular Komodo dragon, Galapagos tortoises, and a wide range of reptiles, tigers, gorillas, and more. Uh, particularly noteworthy is their penguin beach, which is a huge, and I mean massive, circular pool that gives the visitor amazing underwater viewing areas. You got to be careful of those Komodo dragons. And how do I know that? Because when I was cruise directing for many years, uh, I visited Komodo Island in the Philippines. It's a tiny little island that sits pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And um, it's the home of Komodo dragons. Nobody lives there except some park rangers very close to the beach where you wash up in the ship's rubber rafts, not tenders, rubber rafts. You wash up onto the beach, a park ranger meets you and he takes you into the jungle areas of Komodo Island so that you can see the Komodo dragon. They are dangerous man-eating creatures, reptiles. They look like large sort of a cross between an alligator and a, a, a dinosaur and a dragon. They're not huge like the dinosaurs were, but they are very sizable. Let's put it that way. The only thing that protects you from a Komodo dragon, should it decide to approach you, which some have uh, in the last number of years, is a long stick that the Komodo Island National Park Ranger has to protect himself and you from an oncoming Komodo dragon. And the hope is that the stick will uh, push the Komodo dragon back. We when I visited, were not attacked by any dragons, but a couple of them got pretty close, which was kind of scary. And of course, it was scarier because the park ranger ended up telling us that two uh, males lost their lives doing the same thing we were doing, walking around Komodo Island. Uh, one of them was a Swiss tourist, uh, probably 20 to 30 years ago, and uh, another gentleman lost his life before that. So fascinating visit, but scary at the very same time. So if you happen to see a Komodo dragon, a really good place to see one would be at a zoo and not in the open with a long stick to hopefully protect you from getting eaten alive. Next up, we have the one and only Bronx Zoo. We just have a couple of more zoos to cover with you. The Bronx Zoo opened to the public in 1899, and in 1903, it became the first zoo in the Western Hemisphere to have snow leopards. During the course of the next century, the zoo would continue to expand into one of the world's largest zoos and a major innovator in wildlife preservation and wildlife education. The zoo boasts no less than 6,000 animals that can also be seen via a monorail. I have been to the Bronx Zoo a number of times and absolutely loved every visit. 
Next and last, we have the Berlin Zoo. This zoo happens to be the oldest zoo in Germany. It opened back in 1844 and with 1,500 species and no less than 9,500 animals, this zoo holds the most comprehensive collection of species in the world and subsequently is one of the most visited zoos in all of Europe. It also houses the largest aquarium in the world with more than 250 tanks on display. Wow. With that said and done, uh, I hope you enjoyed our brief visit to some of the best zoos in the world. Ten of them. But of course, there are many, 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 many more. So, Glad you were here for the journey. Thank you for joining us. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. God bless.